What's up, guys? Welcome back to Best Kept Secrets. I'm your host, Lele Pons, and I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in today and being here with me. I'm so excited for today's episode, but honestly, I am exhausted. I've been flying from Miami, LA, Miami, LA. I even went to New York one day, just literally for 12 hours. I've been shooting a lot. I just came back from doing Jimmy Fallon, and I'm excited for what's to come. There's also a remix to Set the Note that coming along. I just can't say with who, but it's completely like someone you don't expect at all. But besides that, I have a great show lined up for you guys today. Our first call is with Leah, who is hiding her upcoming surgery from everyone she knows. And then next up is Jane, who has an unusual and often misunderstood hobby. The following content contains adult subject matter, including sensitive material, and is intended for adult consumption only. It may not be suitable for all audiences. Therefore, discretion is advised. Lele Pons is not a trained expert, but is using her personal experiences and platform to create a space for sensitive discussions. So let's get straight to the good stuff and get our first caller on the line. Hello, Leah. Oh, hello. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you for coming and sharing your secret with us. What is your your best kept secret? Oh, boy. You know, it's kind of a relief that I'm calling in today because I've been dying to tell someone and I feel like I can't. So this is kind of perfect. Okay, spill it out. So I next month I'm getting plastic surgery and I haven't told anyone. Where are you getting plastic surgery? I'm getting my nose done. I had my nose done uh, when I was much younger, and it kind of didn't come out right. And I got bullied pretty bad for it when I was a kid. And then it kind of like kept going. I'm like, why did I spend all this money on plastic surgery if I'm still getting teased about my nose? Listen, I got my nose done too. I was bullied because of my nose. It uh, It was like a huge nose and it went down and I got a nose job. And, you know, it, it, like, and I, so I understand you before I got my nose job, I, uh, I got bullied for it. They were like made songs about it as well. So I completely understand why you would. But I have a question. Like, did you love how yours turned out when you got yours done? Well, the first six months I needed the swelling to go down to normal, but it right. turned out great. And I'm going to be honest, like, did you do a lot of research? Because I did a lot of research because, you know, so I know some friends that got their nose job and it didn't go well. And I just, I, I I went through a lot of like doctors and to see the results and everything. So well, yeah. I was much younger. So I'm obviously much more of like a, like a doctor stalker today. Yeah, <laughs> I'm exactly. sure I did a lot more research this time around. Yeah. yeah. I was like, no, I'm going to be tough and I'm going to go through life and it's going to be fine. And then I was just like, you know what? I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I love that. I love it. And, and why do you feel ashamed to like tell people or do it? <sighs> I think to all my friends and the people that know me, I come across as very tough and unfazed by a lot of stuff. And like I bust chops a lot and I don't think that they would think I'm that sensitive enough to want to do it. It's like funny. This is like the one trigger that I have. You can, you can tease me about everything else and like, and, and, and your nose, not your nose. Yeah. For some reason, like I remember I dropped off a friend a few months ago and like he left and he was just joking. He's totally joking around, but he goes, ah, shut up with your big ass nose. Oh, no. And like oh, he fire. got out of the car and I just like I waited Break his till nose. the moment. <laughs> he doesn't have a he doesn't have a small nose either. So that was the funny part. Probably but um, <laughs> I just literally waited till the second he got out of the car and I just did it. I think, honestly, like, if you're saying that you're tough, I feel like this is what I do. When I talk about my nose, I talk so confident about it that people actually do think I'm tough. Like, the day I got my nose job, I told everybody. I was like, I got a nose job. What's up? This is a new me. You know, people, because I was so, like, confident, you know what mm. I mean? They were all, like, it's it's a, it's like a kind of reverse psychology. Like, if you actually do it like that and you have, when you, when you speak about it, you're not like... Yeah, I got a nose job. Actually, it'd be like, yeah, I got a nose job. It's like the best decision I've ever gotten because I was so bad. You know, like people are like, damn, like she's so (sighs) proud. You know, like I wish I was so confident. Yeah, like I think that I I could do that when it's finished. Yeah, do that. When it's finished, like I just don't feel confident right now. I'm very nervous about it. Yeah, do it after. Obviously, that's what I did. (laughs) Yeah, like like, like, okay, look how it looks now, bitches. Well, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I love it and I have this this newfound confidence that I never had before. And that's kind of like the whole point of me doing it. 
Um, but like, I'm hoping that I can, and I, obviously if someone's going to ask me, I'm not going to lie about it, but I think right now, the reason I haven't told anyone is because I just don't want that, that influence from the peanut gallery of like everybody's opinion about what they think I should do with my life. Yeah, no. And so I've wanted to tell people, I just, I just haven't, I haven't. You don't know how. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't want anyone influencing me in any way, like either way. To tell you not to do it. Yeah, they're definitely going to tell me not to do it because they told me not to do it the first time. Oh, no, 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 no. My, 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 my therapist told me not to do it. And I was just like, wow, really? fuck them. No, but yes, my therapist was like, no, don't do it. My mom, my dad. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. You know, <laughs> you don't have my body. You know? But you know what I mean? Like, it's the truth. And like, if you want another surgery because you didn't like the first one, it's your face. Literally. Right. It's your face. Right. Yeah, no, of course, everybody's going to be like, don't do it. Because if they say like, yes, please do it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be like, okay, wow, like, you asshole. The only person that told me to do it was my aunt. And I always, really? like, put on my okay. Instagram my before and after pictures at least twice a month. Good for you. Yeah, and it was a really bad nose. Like, it was, like, bad. It came, oh. it came, it came first, and then I came into the class in my high school. It literally oh, that, entered. See, that's how I, yeah, like, that's how my I My nose now. entered, and then, like, 20 minutes after, I entered. <laughs> that's that's exactly how i feel now yeah you know i taste like little videos for stuff and i'm like oh my god this beak on my face like i just want it to be smaller like that's all i want i know i never even kissed i i, I didn't like kissing with my nose i didn't know what which direction to to go it is it does interfere it definitely interferes and luckily with covid like i'm not worried about like whole makeout sessions right now <laughs> but yeah. eventually in the future i hope to do it again you know yeah like won't you have to tell at least one person because you need someone to take care of you right after the surgery right i am good that's what that's what i'm battling with now it's like who is that gonna be i wish that i didn't have to i wish i could just thug it out and you like have get home to by tell myself someone. you have to have one person <laughs> that you know is not judgmental that that is there for you you know there has yeah, because then someone. what if something goes up? That's what my biggest fear. I don't like getting put under. So, like, obviously I have to tell someone, but I just don't know who that is yet. Listen, if people judge you for having plastic surgery, like, seriously, we're, we live in the world that the Kardashians are the rulers. Totally. I think that we think other people are judging us as much as we judge ourselves, and that's never the case. So, uh, Leah, why, why have you waited so long to get your second surgery? I think I waited because the doctor, the first one that did the surgery, traumatized me after. Not in a really like crazy way, but I, I knew I didn't like it and I knew I wasn't happy with it. So I went back to him, not once, but twice. And I said, look, is there a way for you to fix the cartilage in the front? And he said, well, you know, there's going to be a 40% chance that if I go in there again, it's good. the scarring is going to get even worse and you're going to look like Michael Jackson. So I wouldn't touch it if I were you. What the f- that's because he doesn't want you to go to another doctor. And that's why he, and probably, he, he probably didn't want to see you anymore. he was lazy. He was lazy. And didn't want to do it himself. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, that's fucked up. At the time, I didn't know any better. And I thought that was like the case, you know, so I just kind of believed it. And I didn't I kind of put it out of my mind. And then I started talking to like other people and other doctors and like a bunch of people that I know or have heard have had revision surgeries. And they're like, no, that's not true. That's normal. So I said, you know what? And like, I still thought about it for a long time after. And then I don't even know if this pandemic hadn't happened. I might not do it. I've done so many things in this pandemic I never thought I was going to do. <laughs> I've done more. I've learned more about myself than I've ever done in my life. Like, yeah. It's it's wild. It's wild. Like, the th- we're going to think about, like, even in a year or two's time, like, oh, my God, remember when the world shut down and we, like, had to wear masks everywhere? It's going to be, like, the most bizarre thing. It's so, it's so crazy. You know what? And it's crazy because some people are just, like, they're going to probably say, like, you know, but like you should love yourself the way that God made you or like the way that, that you know, like you're beautiful just the way you are kind of thing. And I was like, yeah, but it's my body and I want to be feel comfortable, you know, as well. So it's your decision at the end of the day. If you like it, if you don't like it, I am all for you wanting to feel better about yourself. 
People are so full of shit with that. I swear. I because know. I have a guy friend and he's always talking about like women and the plastic surgery and the filler and the butt and all this stuff. And like, I have my limitations with it, but like when we'll be out, like when we used to like go to clubs and go out to bars and stuff, the women that he found most attractive were exactly those girls. Uh-huh. So I'm like, all right, what is it then? Like you want a perfect looking chick or do you not? There's a lot. Like, and, and you can, like, mistake, like, because people are like, you should love the way, the way you are, whatever. Okay, so if you're going to say that, what maybe, what about if, like, people, you dyeing your hair, you changing your, your clothes, you, you working out because you want to look fitter, like, you know, that's, like, that's, like, the same kind of thing, you know? You always want to look better. You want to feel better in your body. If you don't like something, then do it. I think they mean well when they say it, but I think that those people are misguided, maybe, but they have never been bullied before, I don't think. Exactly. I think that those people, like, maybe never experienced that as a child and realized how traumatizing it is. You know is. what? It, it wasn't because I was bullied because of my nose. I actually literally was bullying myself. Aww. It's the truth. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I know what a... We all know what an ugly nose is, okay? <laughs> like, we all... You know what I mean? Like, like it's not that hard either. <laughs> Hopefully the stigma is lifting a little bit. I'm definitely not as embarrassed or ashamed to do it this time as I was the first time yeah I think before you ever do anything like that your your mind is just racing a million yeah. different directions and what I would want someone to say just do whatever makes you happy do yeah. whatever you think is going to make you feel better in the long run yeah and why would they be ashamed of that you know yeah I think you should uh, take your advice <laughs> But, you know, we never listen to ourselves. We never listen to ourselves. <laughs> we truth. never listen to our friends. We never listen to anybody. It just takes to live and learn, I think, to, like, ex- really experience and go through life. But, yeah, we always give our friends or, like, others the best advice, and then we don't listen to ourselves, for sure. That's the beauty of life. Sometimes you should look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah, you know? I try to. <laughs> I've been trying to avoid that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to anymore. <laughs> I just want to say you're amazing, and uh, oh. yeah, and I and I sympathize with you. I understand you completely. I've been there. Uh, the only thing nice. I can tell you is, I don't want to say to be like me, but I hope that you are able to find your inner pride about this, where you're excited to tell people about it. Yeah, I I, I hope to get to that point, and I, I think that I will. I think that I will. I just it's just this initial like. You know, the fear of the unknown that like freaks you out. But like, I hope I'll get there. I'm I'm assuming that I will. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to try to think positive. Yeah. And it's never the right time. It's just when you and you feel right. You know, there's never like a, the right moment to tell people. It's like whenever you feel like it. Not tomorrow. Yeah, whenever after, that moment. You know, but uh, I just want to say thank you so much for sharing your secret with us. Thank you for being my therapist. I needed this. That was your first step. <laughs> you did it. And we appreciate that. Oh, thank you so much. This is this was awesome. So I know we mentioned it at the start of the show, but I just want to say it again. I am not a trained therapist. And although I love talking to you guys, I want to encourage anyone struggling emotionally to please reach out to a professional. There are free resources at the end of this and every episode for anyone who needs it. Okay, so back to Leah's call. I obviously relate to her a lot. Everyone's body is different and beautiful, and I think we need to fight against the urge to change ourselves to fit societal norms. The perfect nose or the perfect body is not the key to internal happiness, that's for sure. And I think it's important for anybody who's considering plastic surgery to really dig deep and make sure your decision isn't made with the hopes of it changing your whole life. I thought about getting a nose job for a lot of years, and I did a lot of research on it. And listen, it's not an easy surgery. The recovery sucks. So I think it's great that Leah took some time to decide whether or not she wanted to go in for the second time and do it. And I think it's pretty brave of her to block out everyone's opinions and truly just make the decision for herself. I got my nose done for me and not for anybody else. And even people were like, my parents and friends were like, don't do it, don't do it, you look good. I didn't really care. I mean, I want to do it because of me and because I wanted to. I love my body and I know my nose does not define me, but I think it's pretty fucking awesome to actually have the option to change something so that we are able to feel good and comfortable in our skin. (laughs) 
if you haven't already, make sure to hit the follow button so you can stay up to date with all the best kept secrets goodness. Also, everyone, stop what you're doing right now unless you're driving and post a screenshot of you listening right now and tag two friends who you think will love the podcast. I will be reposting and following back. So head over to Twitter or Instagram at Lily Pons to let me know if you're listening. We'll be back with another call right after this quick break. I'm back. Let's all give each other a big virtual hug and get started with our second call. Hi, Jane. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I hear you have a little secret for us today. And uh, why don't you tell everybody what it is? <laughs> uh, my secret is I am a dumpster diver. A dumpster diver. Can you explain yes. what a dumpster diver is? <laughs> I dig through trash and find treasures. I literally find lots of treasures in the trash. Are you homeless or is it because you like you like to do it as an obsession? No, I'm I'm not homeless. I have a very professional nine to five job. I'm a paralegal. I work for an attorney's office and it's just some my hobby. I love doing it. And it's just something that you know, it's just fun. It does actually sound fun. I just never it never crossed my mind. How do you find out about it? I was just on YouTube, you know, looking at videos, and I just kind of stumbled upon this video of these married couple, and they were, you know, dumpster diving at a makeup store. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I was like, it's crazy, you know, like they're really finding all this stuff. And then I like kind of did more research on it and started watching more videos and reading articles. And and I went out one day and, and you know, started, started just on day one it didn't find anything but <laughs> no that's very time. interesting yeah where do you usually find the dumpsters um you'd be amazed at what um, stores throw away and no i mean any everything you can imagine from clothes to furniture to arts and craft things and just i mean it's just amazing what you will find <laughs> That's good. I mean, what kind of things do you find? Can you tell me what's the what's the craziest thing you've uh, you found? Well, I think the craziest thing I found is I I think I stumbled upon it by accident. Someone might have been um, getting rid of their like toys and videos and like a just like boxes of it, and it wasn't like typical of where the store that I was at. So I'm pretty sure it was just maybe someone getting rid of their little collection or upgrading or something. And I was like, yeah, I'm not taking that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I had my limits. I, I didn't take any of that. <laughs> I wasn't, you know, that's very, yeah. Eh, I wouldn't use use toys. I mean, the videos maybe, you know, but I, I left everything. What's the most expensive uh, item you found? Oh man, I found a. It was like a four hundred and fifty dollar leg massager. Oh wow! Yeah, I looked at at the, what it retailed. The retail price was four hundred and fifty bucks, and. It's funny because that one particular day I had one after work and I was in and some stiletto heels. I was looking all, yeah. you know, cute for work and I just want to peek in. Do you actually, like, use this stuff? Like, what do you do with all the stuff you find? Do you, do you sell it? Do you give it away? Some things I do, I do use because, I mean, I find stuff that is upgraded from what I have at my house. I mean, brand new, like, vacuums and, like, stuff like that I keep and I use and, um... There's a lot of things that I donate, a lot of like clothes that I find that I donate, and then sometimes I I you know resell things if I think it's like in really good you know brand new condition, but I just donate a whole lot. Are you worried it's gonna get out of control and that like your house will be filled with a lot of stuff that you don't actually need? I get rid of it like as soon as I get it. I have a shed in my backyard that I will store things in, but um like inside my house like I do not like clutter. I'm very very neat. Everything has a place. So um, I get rid of things. I, like I said, I donate a lot of things. I have bags and stuff. I call them to come pick up, you know, for donation. And do you see other people doing it too? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I see other people, and actually, um, made a friend, a really good friend, that I you know, met one day, and um, she was there. She didn't even got my age, young girl, and um, you know, we start talking, and we're like, you know, we can, you know, we go out and do it together because. As women, like, you don't want to go out um, at nighttime by yourself or, yeah. you know, be in any kind of bad situation. So, you know, we'll go out, you know, if we feel like hanging out one night or whatever, we'll 
you know, go out and take a few dumpsters together. Have you ever gotten into an argument with a fellow diver over an item? Oh, no, 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 no. No, you know, people that, that dumpster dive um, are generally, you know, they're everybody that I've ever seen, you know, are really nice. It's a very good community. <laughs> That's so. That's so nice. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'll try it. I, I'm gonna try it once. Maybe I like it. Maybe I don't. Have you Have you told anybody about this? So you know, not a lot of people know. My family doesn't know. Why? Why? What do you think either would say? Um, I don't think that uh, they'd be very impressed. <laughs> but um, I just you know, I just it's just something that I like, I don't tell very many people just because of you know they think that all oh, they hear dumpster diver and they're like oh my gosh this homeless you know person yeah exactly and, yeah but think think yeah. you like you're telling the audience right now and me too like what it means you know it's yeah, just collecting no, stuff like i would say dumpster collecting so i don't know <laughs> collecting stuff <laughs> that people don't want anymore well and you're kind of you know doing you know saving the earth i mean all this stuff ends up in landfills and whatever and you can be rescued you can be rescued and there's things that i'll even put in my you know recycle bin um, you know, glass and plastics and stuff. I love that you donate as well. Oh, yeah, because there's so much stuff that you find. Like, I'll find even bags of clothing that are just like, you can tell that they're used from someone's house and people are getting rid of. But, I mean, it's just so sad to me. Like, I, you know, will go and donate because there's so many people that have without and, you know, things that are just in the trash like that that are that can be reused, that can be washed and sanitized. I mean, why not? Why wouldn't you you know, donate it and, you know, give it to a better cause or someone who really, really needs it. Even, you know, family use in my neighborhood. You say you find things that are like good, you know, things that you can use. I find brand- things that are brand new. And I- it's not just like... Yeah, it's so sad. It's just crazy. It's what I find. Things that are new. Things, you know, for children. Some really things for kids. I definitely donate stuff like that because I see things and I'm like, why is this in the trash? Yeah. Our country, our world, or such, you know, we need... People need help right now, and people are going without. And you know, there are all these stores that are just throwing this stuff away. It just it's so sad to me. Does that change the way that you feel about like buying things? Oh yeah, no, definitely. Um, because I was, you know, all about just uh, buying, buying, consuming, consuming. All you know, for a long time, and and um, I've been this is my third third year, um, dumpster diving, and now like I, I just see things so differently. Um, yeah, and and you, and you probably feel bad about even throwing away stuff too. Oh yeah, and I recently lost a lot of weight, and um, you know, all my clothes, I I donated everything. All you know, my clothes donated. Well, congrats for losing weight. Thanks. <laughs> even things like some stores, um, they they will ruin things. They slice um yeah. holes in the things, and like on purpose so that you can't take it. And I I'll take them and I go to the like fabric recycling or whatever, and, and I throw it in the fabric recycling bin. So you say you find you find it like uh, in the back of like where so I can like know um, retail stores like all different kinds of retail stores um, a lot a lot of them have trash compactors and whatever but um, and you don't you know if they're locks I don't ever try to like get in, you know break into them because then you're breaking laws and I'm you know I'm try I do everything legally is it illegal to do this I think it's it's so it's state by state and where I am it's not. But if you are purposely, like, if you break a lock or whatever, then you, you know, get trespassing and, um... Yeah, of course. A police officer even stopped me the other day, and and he, like, thought it was, like, he, he didn't get me in trouble or anything. He just wanted to see what I was doing, making sure I wasn't, like, doing anything bad. And he's like, you're not illegal. He's like, you're free to do whatever. He's like, just don't, you know, don't litter or make a mess and, and have fun. But it is state by state, so... I just want to say thank you for explaining to us what uh, dumpster diving is. You never know. You might have like inspired other people to try it. <laughs> I'm very curious, so I might do it. Thank you, and uh, continue. I mean, there's nothing wrong with what you're doing, to be honest. So I will. Bye. Bye. My God, you really do hear new things every day and find out about different hobbies that you can do. I mean, that never crossed my mind. When I heard about dumpster diving, all I think about is like, you know, the dumpsters that I usually see are like the ones in restaurants, the ones like that people like just, it's always smells bad. So I'm just like, I don't even get, you know, when you see a dumpster, you don't get near it. It smells bad. So uh, when someone says dumpsters diving, I'm literally picturing someone diving in for food and searching for stuff and it smells bad. I don't know. But uh, this is this is brand new. I mean, it depends on the dumpsters that you go to. Because I feel like she has a strategy here. And she goes to, like, these specific dumpsters. 
So I might try it out. You never know. I mean, we I might find other things and then I might, I don't know, become obsessed with it. Um, even like people I feel like right now listening to this are probably like curious to see. I mean, she has a point. There's a lot of things that people are used that they just throw away and, and it could be used again. And, you know, why not? Seriously, why not? Because, you know, we live right now in a time that like instead of like throwing stuff away, it's very important to save and donate or reuse again. So I think that what she's doing is kind of kind of genius. I I'm going to probably do it 100%. I don't know about you guys, but uh uh there are a lot of people in need right now. So I think she's helping them. However, as she mentioned, you know, the laws go state by state, so you be careful with that because maybe you know where she is, it's okay, but in other states it might not be. So check first before you do it. Well, we've come to the end of our time together this week. Please make sure to hit the follow button if you haven't already so you can stay up to date with all of our episodes. And like I mentioned earlier, I'll be following and reposting all of your posts about the show. Looking back at the two calls that we heard today, you might think that they have nothing in common, but at the same time, they do have one thing in common, which is the fact that both Leah and Jane are keeping secrets from people because they're afraid of what people may think of them. You know, for Leah, she's made the decision not to tell anybody about her surgery because she's worried that other people's feelings and opinions may influence a decision that she spent a lot of time thinking about and is really only up to her. And for Jane, she's worried about the stigma that other people have associated with dumpster diving. You know, for me, for example, I thought she was homeless, but she's not. I definitely had the same first reaction that most people have. And I really appreciate that she came out on the show and educated us on what dumpster diving really is and why it can be an important and caring thing to do. I mean, there are so many people in need in the world, especially right now. And I know that her call will make me think twice before throwing away something that somebody else could need. And I'm glad that she didn't let other people's judgment stop her from diving in. So that leads me to the question of the week for all of you. Have you ever not done something you wanted to do just because you were worried about what other people would say? I know it's a situation I've found myself in before, so I would love to hear your stories about times when you've been worried about being judged. Therefore, head to my Twitter or Instagram page at Lillipons to vote, and you can also head to shots.com slash secrets to tell me your story. I hope you guys have a blessed week, and I'll be back next Wednesday with a brand new episode of Best Kept Secrets. I love you guys. If you or someone you know are struggling emotionally, text START to 741-741 for a confidential chat anytime. Bum, bum. Thanks for listening to Best Kept Secrets with me, Lele Pons, only on Spotify in partnerships with Shot Studios. The Shot Studios original team includes creators John Shahidi and Sam Shahidi, my lovely producer Belinda Mercer, and audio editor Stephen Colon. From Spotify Studios executive producers Javier Pinol, Liz Gately, Gina Delvac, and Danny Trebodge. And a special thanks to Dan Behar, Jessica Molina, Francisco Quijada, and Julio Pabon. I'm Lele. Follow me on Instagram at Lele Pons and check out my exclusive merch at lilshop.com. That is lilshop, L-I-L, shop.com. Talk to you next week. <laughs>